Hi guys. So it is 2 p.m. The event starts at 2 um, and then I give people a few minutes to get on. Go ahead and say hi if you can hear me and tell me where you're from. Wish there had been... Someone said they wish there had been more notice for this. Um, this event actually has been posted for about three weeks. I post them in advance um, and then I just go live on the main page. Um, so if you ever want to know, just check out the events section. And that's where you'll see all the ones coming up and you'll know kind of when to come on and watch the live as well. Amy says, today's laundry day, but I will watch and maybe paint. Awesome, awesome. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Tamara. Wow, okay, cool. Oh, hey, Christine. Cool. Millie from Bellevue, perfect, yes. Nice and local. So we are painting this margarita glass today. So I made this margarita virgin, of course, just for another month. Um, I haven't tried it yet. I don't really, I mean, I like margaritas, but I'm not really sure. Teresa from Tennessee, Ariel from Kent, Stephanie, Vancouver, nice. Oh, good Lord. This is sweet. I'll be right back. They definitely don't taste the same without the, uh, what do they put in it, vodka? Whew. See if they, I put more uh, carbonated soda water in here. So because it's the virgin, I think I put um, lime, a little bit of limeade. I put mint in there. I don't know why. It sounded good. Uh, and then I put some orange juice in it because apparently that's how you make it. Carbonated soda and some agave. That's better. Whew. That was really sweet. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, let's get started. So you can freehand this um, if you want to. There is a tracer. So if you downloaded that, this is what mine looks like underneath. Kind of far away right now. Let's change that. Ha. So this is what it looks like underneath. A um, little lopsided, but that's okay. Um, so you can freehand it um, or use the tracer either way. Dorothy in Mount Vernon with a friend from Oklahoma. Awesome. Oklahoma. Is Oklahoma visiting? So your friend is visiting from Oklahoma. That is far. That's, that's far away. That is far away. Okay. So painting here. So you can switch up your colors. Um, my margarita is green, just like this one ish, yellowish. Um, and then, but you can make it like, what if you wanted a uh, mango margarita or something fun, maybe a strawberry margarita, paint it like orange or red or something. Um, and so I'll show you the paint colors that I have. Shweta from Issaquah. Nice. Brenda. Yeah, that was really sweet when I took that sip. Okay. So I have black and white, um, deco art. And, and I'm using, usually when I do these tutorials, you guys might have noticed, so I use Liquitex Basics. Today I'm using Deco Art. This one's a pretty simple, fast, kind of fun painting. Very, um, I would say more relaxed, but really we're just putting lines and streaks everywhere. Um, and so I grabbed a blue. I think I'm going to use this for the stem instead of this green color because I didn't like how it faded into my leaves. Um, and then I have a baby pink just for fun. If you have regular pink, you can mix white with it. I have a teal, or it's called Laguna. Uh, but I'm going to use this with some white for the background. Festive green. I have this one. Uh, I have, so to get the brighter colors, I grabbed some neons. So I grabbed some neon pink. Um, I did grab neon yellow. I didn't use this last time, so we'll see if I'll even use it this time. Uh, neon green to get those bright lem lemon <laughs> lime colors. <laughs> Tori, hi from Ontario. And yes, she is visiting from Oklahoma. Awesome. Um, and I also grabbed a, of course, you guys noticed that I love to put metallics on all my paintings. Um, and I grabbed um, some glitter because I think what I'm going to try with the salt on the rim is putting um, 
glitter on there instead. So um, if you have it traced, let's get started. I'm gonna start putting paint on the, the plate. <laughs> uh, brush wise though, um, this was also in the list, but uh, I have my one inch flat brush. This is what I'll use for the background. I have a 12 inch flat brush. Um, I'm gonna paint probably most of like maybe the glass with it, the leaves, the bigger portions, which isn't the background. And then I have two, this round brush, I may or may not use. Same with this detail brush. I'll probably just grab one of them, whatever one I feel like grabbing. Um, the liner brush is really good for the smaller details, but this one, it's a little bit bigger. It's still round, but it stays pretty pointed so I can go touch it really lightly and get those thin lines still. So I'm gonna put these on the side, this water, move our fancy painting. Where do I wanna put this? Oh goodness. That's probably gonna fall. If you hear it allow fall, that's what it is. Okay, so this is traced. So you can Sharpie certain things if you want to. Um, oh, I still have the banner on. Thanks, Terry, you always catch that. I always forget about that. There we go. Um, and you can Sharpie like the black parts if you want to, but um, I'm not just because we're going to paint around it enough that um, it shouldn't be an issue. We should still be able to see our outline and our lines. As I'm going, I might fix how it's a little crooked, but not really worried about it. All right, so I'm going to start putting colors on my plate. I'm going to grab my Laguna here. This is my teal. If you don't have teal or if you want to change the background of your color, just do it. Um, but to make teal, you can mix blue and green, and then you can also add some white to it. Amy, you're back. That was a quick laundry fold there. So I'm going to start with a little bit. Um, Deco art spreads pretty well, um, and I always forget that. So I always put too much on my plate. So I'm going to try not to do that this time. Um, I'm going to put some of this blue on here. This will be for my stem, and I'm probably going to mix it with white to lighten it up. And then I'll put green on here. We will end up making like a dark green by adding some black just for some outlines. Um, some, this is called baby pink. So again, if you just have regular pink or if you have red, then mix red and white to get pink. This is just for some, just some extra color on the flower. And then my neon colors. Neon, neon, neon. So, um, I've tried a whole bunch of different neon colors and fluorescent colors, and these ones do show up pretty darn well. Um, I do have Liquitex, it's just thicker, um, and I guess it's it's nice, but I think these show up a lot better. Uh, what do I need? Oh, black and white, duh. So originally, when I had planned this party, um, I thought it was Memorial Day weekend. So I thought we were going to be like celebrating, you know, everyone's still stuck inside and I was wrong. Um, so we're going to do it anyway. Doesn't matter. How do we sketch this? So there was, uh, you can do it with a pencil, um, but there was a tracer that I had posted in the event and you can also find it on my website too. Actually, the link takes you to the website and you print it out. Um, and then you can either use tracing paper. A lot of people don't have tracing paper. Um, and then it just, it, or carbon paper and you push and it gets onto the canvas. Um, or a lot of the times people hold it up to a window and trace it too. Um, but that usually when I do stuff like this and I include a tracer, um, I post it in the event and then you can do it um, anytime, but usually before the party. So even if not, so you can still hand paint it. You can paint the whole background and hand paint it. Um, probably a little bit harder, um, but it's still possible and it's worth a, it's worth a shot. You can try it. Um, and it, you know, if it doesn't turn out, you can try it again or get that tracer and then do it a second time if you want to as well. That's what happened when you have one last thing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have a pile of laundry upstairs. Okay. So I'm going to start with the background. Um, and I'm pretty fairly like loose with the background color. Um, I know if you don't paint that often, um, we want to be like perfect on the lines, you know, and kind of go right into each like little divot and stuff. I don't really worry about that anymore. And it still works very well. Um, you know, you don't really see it unless you're like super close up. And plus we want the paint to touch and be close together instead of leaving a gap. All right. So 
Let's do this. So I'm going to start painting the background. I'm going to move my paints off a little bit. And I'm going to grab my teal color and I'm going to see how it looks. I might add a little bit of white. And I'm just going to be kind of quick and loose with it. I don't really care if the uh, if I brush strokes in different places or anything like that. Um, as in like they're not like perfectly straight across or straight down or anything either. I like the loose kind of messy streaky strokey <laughs> look if that's what you want to call it. So you can see how I'm just kind of really quickly. I mean, I'm going to try not to go too quick. Um, just getting this paint on there and then just filling in the gap. I had to play with my lighting a little bit today because yesterday was so stormy. Every, a lot of people's power went out um, and rainy. It rained all day, at least here. And then today, um, a little sun popped out this morning, so I was really excited because that usually gives me really good lighting in this room. And then right when I hit the live button, the clouds came <laughs> and took over. So I had to mess with my little lights that are glowing on the side here. And it always changes the color like uh, of the paint a little bit too. So th that this actually looks pretty accurate, but some of the colors might look a little bit different. So you can see how my brush strokes, they literally just go back and forth. Um, and one thing to keep in mind too, you guys, is um, these videos always stay posted. So I don't remove them. You can always find them in the video section um, later. I'm not, I don't plan on removing them. And also, if you ever go to my website, which is where the tracers are and stuff, right? Um, I have all of the previous ones posted there too. So you don't have to like search through all my videos. Um, so they are posted on my website and that website you can find in the about section. You know, if you go to my business Facebook page, there's always an about section on all pages. Um, and that's where you can find the website link and then go there. There's a drop down menu for like virtual parties. Um, and it says tutorials and supply lists, and that's where you can find everything too. So a few places, just sometimes Facebook's easier for people. Sometimes the website is easier for people. You never, never know. Um, and then it takes you to a unlisted YouTube link, but that's where you'll be able to see the videos. And it's kind of nice because you can um, pause it, fast forward it, do whatever you need to. Don't have to listen to me like, blabber for an hour. So I'm actually really, really liking this color. So I'm not adding any white to it. Did anyone get to go anywhere for Memorial Day? I saw a lot of people. Um, we went to just like this local soccer field kind of park thing um, down at the river. And we saw people camping. Uh, which I don't think is actually allowed in our county right now, but to each their own, right? People are going stir crazy, so they want out, which I understand because me too. But I know in um, like the nicer counties, like Chelan County, uh, people were there and I'm pretty sure they could camp there. Or up in Island County, I think they had opened up to phase two so they were allowed to go there and go to the beach and stuff. Um, if you're painting on an easel, paint like the tops and sides of the canvas as you go, um, if, if you want to. Um, I just, you know, every time I paint flat, just because I'm always touching the canvas, I don't until the very end, and usually I forget. Um, but it is good, so if you plan on like hanging it up, you do wanna get <laughs> the tops and sides and the bottom covered uh, so you don't have this awkward white border. Some people like to put, um, like they can frame it, right? So then it wouldn't matter if you painted it or not. Or some people do fun things like, um, you know, decorative tape around the border instead, or they paint like black with white stripes or white with black stripes or something fun or a chevron look. Um, Something just to keep it different, kind of stand out a little bit when it's on the wall. 
I've seen some pretty cool things. I don't remember the last time I even had a margarita. And I don't, mint sounded really good. Mm, it is really refreshing. I do wish it had the vodka in it, but side note. All right, let's get around this lime. I keep wanting to call it a lemon. Amy, you went camping? Shweta, no, you didn't go anywhere? Yeah, I'm really, really craving to go somewhere. Even like if someone had like a cabin or something just to get out of my neighborhood. I swear I've studied every house within a mile and a half radius. Studied their kitchen, their layout, you know, when you walk around, you kind of creep in people's houses. Maybe everyone doesn't do that, but uh, I like to just to see their setup. It's kind of fun. So again, that background is pretty messy. Um, you can see all those brush strokes, but I like that setup. Um, you know, in the end, if we add like the fern or the leaves or the palm tree or whatever, um, that'll hide some of it, but I like this look. Um, you can make it smooth. It's, it takes up your time, so you might not catch up if you try to make it perfect, right? Um, you can always come back to it too and just paint another coat as well. What else? I would say we should go to, let's do a coat um, on in the margarita glass. So I have my neon, now I wanna say neon lime, my neon green color. Um, so I'm gonna see how that looks. I'm gonna grab my number 12 brush. I just wanna see how bright it is or if I need to add white. That's pretty bright actually. Yeah, you can see how bright that is. I don't have the baby yet, but gosh, another month, another month. Um, this shirt, when I bought it, right, it fit. And now there's like a gap. I'll show you guys later. There's a gap where the shirt opens up. You know, it's like, it's not fitted around the belly. It's really awkward. <laughs> but I finally got some new maternity pants because I'm growing out of the ones I had. And you still can't try things on in the store which is kind of dumb because you actually can go, you can, you can return things, right? So at least in Target locally, I can return here. Um, so I have to bring them home, try them on, and they didn't work. So I <laughs> have to go bring them back. It's like, well, why not just open the fitting room? I mean, I get it. But... And my baby shower is next weekend. We're doing that virtual baby shower. So I'm actually gonna teach you guys like that jellyfish painting. Um, I think that one's at 11. And then we're gonna get cleaned up and get some, my friend is gonna take some, um, kind of just some photos for us. Cause we, I don't think there's really many pictures of me being pregnant that I post or even take, I don't know. Um, so she thought it'd be nice if she, took some pictures for us um, and that will be like our maternity little photo shoot over in the park and then we're going to set up a tent outside and there's people some people not a lot we only made it for like an hour or two uh, most people sent gifts in the mail um, and we're gonna do a virtual kind of baby shower uh christine so i have this is so it looks yellow but this is a neon green from deco art um, I have neon yellow, but since this is so yellow, I probably won't use it. Neon pink, uh, black and white. The background was teal. And then I also have a baby pink that I'll probably add to my flower. And then just some green and blue. Um, you can change up anything you want, though. I liked the pink flower, green leaves, obviously. Um, and my margarita is green because it's gonna it's a it's a lime margarita, lemon lime margarita. So I did paint that margarita area that bright green but i think i'm gonna grab show you i'm just gonna grab like a touch of my regular green and mix it in with my lime green just to get it's still kind of bright but i want to get some definition in here and i'm not gonna like i'm not gonna fill it in 
I just want to add a little bit more. So these are the messy, crazy strokes again, nothing pretty. Just because I want to add, how does that look? Yeah, so you can see how there's just like little dashes of paint. And I'm going to end up covering this pencil line because I tried to straighten out, <laughs> straighten out that glass. So you don't have to do this extra part of the green, but I wanted to add a little bit more color in here. Oh, I almost just dipped my brush in my margarita. Oh, sorry, just for the margarita. So this is neon green. And then uh, I have festive green, which is regular green. I think I might have like a dot of white as well. Yeah, Amy. Amy's gonna, Amy's my cousin. She's gonna come do the drive-by virtual party. That's fun. I got some cool decorative cookies. They're super expensive. I probably can make them, but I don't got time for that. So I'm not gonna do that. Uh, but they're really cute. We don't really have a theme because we don't really have a room for our baby. Uh, he's just gonna be in our room for a little bit. And we're not going to decorate it because we plan on moving out. So we kind of just decided to go with like a clouds kind of, you know, that baby theme. It's like clouds and the moon and, you know, like the grays and yellows and stuff like that. Stars, stuff like that. Like, I want to say it's like a vintagey thing, but it's really not. It's not as popular anymore because a lot of people do like animals and wood theme and hunter themes and stuff for, for boys mountain themes that that might be a theme i want to find a place for us to move so i can paint a wall mural in his room ideally that would be fun all right so i'm going to do the same thing for the lime so this is going to be the lime green it's going to kind of blend in just until we start like outlining everything and that's normal And I always do really light coats just because I like it to dry. I don't like to kind of mess around. So it's very little paint. So I actually like, I had a whole pile, right? And I, look how little I used. I always do that. Uh, that's the lime. I'm going to take some of the dark green and then we'll probably come back to this part. But I'm just going to kind of edge the outer part of this lime in my dark green. It's not perfect. I just want to get some whimsical, deep look kind of in the background here. Something like so. Oof, I got salt everywhere. I put salt on the rim on this, but that I'm drinking out of a straw, so I don't know what the point of that was. Let's see. Yep. Salty. Salty. Oh. Holy crap. Does anyone else have a drink or is it just me? You guys probably have better drinks if you have the drink. Um, I was hoping someone from the East Coast would be getting on because I think it's what? If we started at 2, it's probably 5 there. Which is probably a better time for them to be having an afternoon drink. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. So, and those are just the quick parts, right? So most of this is quick, um, just because it's, it's that loose kind of painting, right? So we get our margarita glass with some dark green, um, kind of like touches on it. We're going to, we did the lime with lime green and then <laughs> neon green, uh, and then a dark green kind of edge, but it's all going to come together. So just kind of put your base coat on there. We're going to play with it a little bit more. So for my stem, in my original, my color was super close to the green on the leaf. So I'm going to try to avoid that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my regular blue and pull out some white. And I'm going to mix like this lighter blue instead. Kind of like, it, I guess it's a baby blue. And I'm going to paint my stem of my glass this color. I might not like it in the end, but it's different and at least it stands out compared to my last one. Kind of just blend it in. Uh, 
And I like that with the deco art paints um, for this one, it just works really well because it's just more of like smaller areas that we're filling in. Um, nothing really needs to overlap, right? So we don't need necessarily that like higher quality of paint. Some of the ones that we do in like my virtual party club, um, there's like a lot of overlapping. So it's nice to have nice paint because uh, it's easier. You don't have to do as many um, <laughs> coats of paint. It's a lot nicer and it dries a lot quicker too. This one dries pretty quick, but um, it, you know, like some people might want to recover this painting and um, if you use like a nicer paint, usually you don't have to. Sandra, hello, you're having a vodka lemonade for you. <laughs> Thank you. You're painting a Mai Tai? Oh gosh, that sounds delicious. Amy, I'm a little disappointed that I haven't, that I've worn my Bob Ross shirt during multiple paintings now. I know, I don't have paint on mine either. And that's just so strange because when I'm not painting or when I'm not wearing this shirt and I'm painting, it's on everything, everything. But when I'm wearing this shirt, like I'm trying to like, even when I splatter with a toothbrush, it's not coming back at me. I think I just need to decorate it myself. I don't know. Maybe I'll do a, maybe I'll just splatter paint all over it. Just for fun. Oh gosh. Here we go. It's getting to a point where I can't sit close to the table anymore to paint with you guys. Working back up there. All right, so I think I'm gonna like that stem glass a little bit more. We're gonna add, you know, blacks, whites, maybe teals to it again, um, but just get that one quick coat on there. Um, and with the flower, um, the little stem that pokes out in the flower, you can do that with just lime green at any time too, um, or yellow, or you can change it. Um, and you can change the color of the flower, right? So you don't have to do it pink. Uh, the leaves will do mostly a regular green. We will end up mixing green with some black to make some dark green too. Christine, you finally just splattered your shirt. <laughs> yep. Terry, you don't have paint on yours either, but before I got it, I splattered one of my Seahawks shirt. Oh gosh, but did you mean to? Probably on accident, you splattered the wrong shirt. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. So for those of you, you're wondering about the shirts, if not, um, so a local business was doing this fundraiser um, and they're still doing it and the shirts are still for sale. Um, and it's this Bob Ross shirt with my logo on it, um, paints it repeat. And then it says, no mistakes, just happy accidents. Um, and it's a white shirt. So I, um, if people buy them, they're $20, um, $10 goes to that company and $10 goes back to this company. So it was um huge for a long time because it's a, a small business fundraiser right because all of us didn't have any business coming in because i couldn't go out and do public parties or anything it was just all virtual stuff um and i still can't so um they're still trying to reach their goal of five thousand. so there's a lot of local businesses that are on there i think they've reached i don't i think they've reached halfway maybe by now um so there's a lot of local businesses on there but um, so I, I thought it'd be cool to get a white shirt to wear when people are painting with me during this time, they would splatter it and get it all paint colored, right? Looks like that's not happening. There you know. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to get paint on my Seahawks shirts either. Um, okay, so let's do, this is pretty dry actually. Um, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do just the edge of my leaf. And remember the leaf is only top, bottom, and right. This, the rest of this is a flower. So I'm just gonna grab regular green for now. You can grab any brush. I'm still using my number 12. And we're just gonna fill in this green part. We're gonna add texture and stuff to it later, but let's just get this base coat on there. Didn't even think about it, but I bet like a, gosh, not a yellow background. I'm trying to think of what color would look really well. Cause I do like this green and teal blue kind of look but part of me thinks it just kind of blends together a little bit too much maybe a pink background but then the flowers pink i don't know i'd have to think about that so uh 
next weekend is the jellyfish, right? I hope a lot of you are excited for that one. Uh, that one's really cool. Um, and the event is posted on that. And remember the supply list is in the event. Um, and it's also, I think it's also posted as a post in the discussion too. So a few places where you can find that, but usually in the details section of the event is where you find the supply list. And then I'll be going live back on this main page. It's just way easier to go live on a main page than in a group um, because I can actually see who's on. Um, I can see a lot more and it's a lot easier. Um, and it stays on my page versus the group. Um, it's just harder to find because it doesn't show up as quickly. So I always just end up going live on the main page. Some people get angry, but that's okay. I try to guide them and tell them where to find it. It's easier to show than describe. So the, this is just that thin coat of green. I kept thinking I wanted to play that um, pina colada song, but I realized we weren't painting pina coladas. Even though that sounds really good too. All right, thin coat of green. Orange would look cool in the background. You're right. That would look really cool. I think it would look cool to do like a, I'm thinking maybe an ombre effect, but I do like the orange, like the bright orange would look really cool. Hmm. Okay, let's see. We're gonna let that dry. And then the remaining base coat, um, you know, cause all the details come later, right? So the remaining base coat is just our flowers. So I think what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna grab, I, I have my neon pink. So if you don't have neon pink, just grab a pink. Um, any pink is fine. I'm going to grab some of my neon pink. I'm actually going to mix it with my baby pink a little bit. See if that even makes a difference. It makes a little bit different color. This is just what I'm choosing to do because I want that neon pink to stand out when I do, uh, my little streaks on it. Yes. Neon orange would look really cool. Now I wish I did that. I do have neon orange, but um, also if you are using neons, check it out to see, not everyone has a black light anymore, uh, but check out to see what it looks like under a black light. I still have a goal. So um, we were just getting into starting um, and setting up some black light parties uh, before the coronavirus hit. Um, and so I had bought black lights, I had organized with some venues, some ideas, um, just so obviously the public still could come in to their location, right? Um, and I was super excited. We had some paintings kind of put together and some ideas. So it would be black light when we're painting. But then coronavirus hit and we couldn't do it. So I have these black lights and I have all these neon paints um, and these designs. But I meant to do, I keep meaning to do like a, like a virtual, just fun black light party. But because it's almost summer, it stays bright out quite later. And being almost eight months pregnant, I fall asleep at like 8.30, so that it's not really working out. But going into this third, or well, not going into, but being in this third trimester, I'm getting a lot of like insomnia, so maybe that'll be a thing. Maybe I'll paint like some, I really wanna paint like a black light octopus. That would be really cool. We have a really easy, simple dinosaur, you know, and stuff for kids, but an octopus would look really cool in a black light. There we go. That's the base coat of the flower. I actually really like, I like the blue against the pink. That looks really nice. Um, and then the last part, remember, is just this little stem. I'm just going to take my neon green and paint that in. Um, it kind of just looks yellow anyway. Oh, 
and I do want to paint maybe I'll even it's kind of I don't know how well it would work but um, I do a lot of porch signs in my normal classes like in my in-person classes um, and they're super popular and I really want to get like a um, summer porch sign going and I've been really into flamingos lately so I think I want to do something like that but then I think how are you guys going to get a porch sign put together to paint with me so I think what I might do is teach you how to build the porch sign or you can like you know it doesn't have to be a tall porch sign it could be like a just get a few pieces of wood or whatever something you want to do um it doesn't have to be the four foot tall ones that we do in person um teach you how to build those and what i do and where to get it um and then we can do the virtual party too that would be cool yellow pink and white yellow pink and white neon pink oh i bet this is going to be a really pretty color Oh my goodness, you guys, mixing this, so neon yellow, neon pink, look at this gorgeous color. I'm going to grab some white, and it kind of just lightens it up. Wow, that was pretty. You know what, I think I actually might use this on the flower. Some highlights colors. This is like a sunset vibe here. It makes me want to do like some paint pouring with neon paint. Oh my gosh, thanks for that. That's really pretty. All right, so we got that awkward looking stem hanging off to the side. Uh, we got our leaves, we got our flower. So we've got all the basics that we need to fill this in. So I think let's go back to um, kind of the beginning. So I'm not going to add any more like variations of color to like the basics, right? We're going to start, oh gosh, we're going to start throwing our glasses everywhere. Uh, we're going to start doing like some, you know, we're going to do the highlighting of different colors. So whites and blacks. Um, I know it seems kind of strange and scary to like do everything outlined in black. It kind of seems weird, right? But it, it makes it pop a lot more. So you'll see even on this one. Just outlining it in black, so you kind of don't even notice it. I mean, you do once you look at it and you know it's there. But if you don't, it doesn't pop as much. Kind of looks boring and kind of crazy. So let's do, let's do the lime. So I think what I'm going to do is now I have my, I just grabbed this. You don't have to, but this is my round brush. Uh, this is a number eight if i remember there's so much paint on it i can't see um but it doesn't really matter the size you just want to make sure that your round brush stays pointed meaning like it's a, just a better quality brush i have a lot of round brushes that splay everywhere and they're not pointed so they're really hard to work with and those are the cheaper brushes um so i think what i'm going to do is just kind of highlight just maybe i'm going to maybe i'll grab some dark green just kind of throw some when I say throw, obviously you're not throwing paint, but um, that just means I'm dipping into different colors and not caring really where it goes and just kind of edging or outlining, doing some quick streaks of paint. So it doesn't blend in. It's not put together, right? They're just streaks of different colors. So if you do just like one or two of that regular green, maybe of that neon green, and then maybe even some white. Just get some white in there. Try not to do it too much because the more you go over it, the more it's going to blend, right? Um, so it's kind of hard to tell that I, you can see the white in there, but it's kind of hard to tell where I put it. We can always add brighter white to it in the end too, to make it pop even more. Um, and then I'm going to take, let's do, I'm going to take actually, let's do the, just so the lime stands out, the inner circle of that lime. I'm going to take that with my darker green and just get that little circle outline. So it's kind of got a darker ring on the outside, like the, the wedge or the skin of it. Um, and then the inside circle is the same. And I might even brighten up. And again, remember, you guys don't have to do everything I'm doing. Just kind of have fun with your lime. 
I'm just kind of brightening up the inside of that circle with some white. And then I'm going to outline all of those little uh, marks in black and see what else I want to do with it. So you'll kind of see where you wanted to pop out more. Uh, you just have to be careful. So once you have your black on there, uh, if you screw that up, it's kind of hard to take off. So uh, this is dry. So I'm going to set this right here. So I'm going to grab just a little touch of black here. And I'm just going to roughly, so I'm not trying to get this perfect. You can always use a Sharpie, um, a paint pen, whatever your little artist heart desires. Um, but if you touch it very lightly with the tip of a round brush, you get those thin lines. So no pressure, just very light. I always re-dip in black after every line because it doesn't really go very far. And then outlining. And the fun thing about this painting is you don't have to be exactly like when I'm outlining, like maybe not all my black lines touch. They're kind of broken lines. And they're not always like on like the very edge of that paint too. So there's actually green paint hanging off here. Um, you know, when we do the rest, it's going to be the same. So I'll outline it, but there's going to be green on the outside. There's going to be green on the inside. So it's just kind of a rough kind of fun look. And then we'll do the inside just a little bit. So the inside circle, like I might not even connect it. I do want to cover my pencil line, but something like that. And I'll definitely be putting more white in there, I think, once all that dries. So you got a little bit of a line there. Um, you can, so I always say like, we always should start from the top of the canvas when we're doing stuff like this. Uh, Cause if you start from the bottom and you start tracing everything or outlining everything, if your hand rubs around in that black and then you start moving up, you just like swish that black all the way up and it can be a disaster. So it doesn't mean you failed. It just means you have to kind of work with it a little bit more. Happy little accident. So uh, let's go. I'm going to do a little bit on my margarita glass here. So I'm going to take my black and just roughly outline my glass here. And it kind of feels like every once in a while, like I'm running out of paint, right? Like I don't grab enough. But I also like that look. So you can see also, so all my black lines, they don't touch. They're really rough, kind of messy. So try not to make it perfect because it'll kind of ruin the intention of the painting. Although I still think it would look really nice too. Um, and then the ice cubes. I'm just going to get some quick lines on there. I do like how some of the lines are thick. Some of them are thin. Just depends. It's kind of just random. I'm excited to see what the Mai Tai looks like too. So we got some black outlines there. Mmm, that's tasty. Um, and we can do... I want to leave that there and then start messing around with our flower and leaves more. So uh, we'll let all that dry. Maybe I'll come back and put some more white in it. We definitely will for the margarita glass and the ice cubes and stuff and definitely our salt later too. But let's kind of add on to the layers of the leaf and the flower. So it kind of looks like it's something cool, right? So we have our base layer of green. So you can do two things. Uh, you can make a light green by taking some green and some white and just kind of move that around a little bit. And then you can take a little bit of black and make a dark green. You can try to make, see what it looks like with a little bit of blue. It's just kind of like a, I wanna say it's like a forest green. It's not super dark. Just always use a tiny bit of black because it goes a long way. So now we have like what a regular green, a darker green and a, a lighter green and it's still not the neon green. So what I'm going to do is start kind of tracing, uh, you know, we're going to do black and white as well, but kind of just like the inner parts of the leaves. So maybe I want to do 
you know, I'm going to take my dark green and just kind of outline a little bit on each leaf. This is still my round brush. And I'm going to do just a line, a small line in the middle. This one probably not because you can't really see it. Maybe a little tiny edge. Um, and then maybe just a little bit of a, I want to call it a swoosh, not technically, the stem, like the, the, the spine, the spine, the spine of the leaf. It's alive. And get just some random color in there. Just something to make it look fun instead of boring. Uh, and let's do a little bit of this lighter green. And again, don't, you don't have to do what I'm doing. If you don't like it, don't do it. So it's just adding a little bit of color definition. Different hues and shades. And again, we're going to do, you know, like white and black. It'll make it pop a lot more. Um, so just throw some lines in there, different colors. Um, and then we can also do the same thing with the flower, just with pinks. So we have our base pink. Um, I'm going to grab my, I think I'm going to, I made this neon color that was recommended. I really, I'm going to try this. So I'm going to take this. So each petal has its own swoop, right? So I'm going to work with each petal. So I'm just going to maybe, oh gosh, that's pretty. If you guys have neons, make this color. So I'm just going to do just some fun lines. Try not to think about it too much. When we do, it kind of gets overwhelming sometimes. And then I'm going to, I don't even rinse off my brush. I'm just going to go into my bright pink. And I'm just going to continue doing swirls and swoops and trying to still, you want to separate these petals but you don't want to make it like, like I wouldn't just leave it like this. I want to keep filling it in a little bit. But I'm going to try not to do too much of the same color in one spot. Let's go, maybe I'll grab to my baby pink here. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> maybe it's just my sense of smell, but deco art paint really smells smells like paint. Surprise, right? Uh, but usually I don't smell that with my Liquitex. Makes me feel like I'm painting my house or something. So here, I mean, obviously I'm just grabbing, I don't even rinse off my brush, I'm just grabbing between all those colors, just something to get a variety in there. And we have that base color, so there's always something underneath, just in case it didn't like get filled in. Um, and then, you know, the white and black will make it stand out more. Um, I think, yeah, I added some white in the other one. And in the end, I'm gonna add metallic gold. So um, to a lot of this. So if you have that, just leave some space for that too. So just be playful, let your mind kind of create, um, I mean, don't even get that vision in your head. Just let your arm flow. If your mind is like, I want to put one here, I want to try one there, then do that. It always looks better that way. I really like this orange color. Okay, I'm going to stop playing because that could continue to go on forever as I just want to put. Cool. Um, in the stem of the margarita glass, same idea. So this is kind of just what this painting is about. So you're just throwing lines of different colors. So in the stem, on my other one I did just different colors of blues and greens and then white and black, of course which will be last. So I think, so I made this blue stem. Well, I think I'm just gonna grab before it dries, well. 
maybe some of this turquoise and put some of that in here. I'm just choosing, just breaking lines, right? So just choosing random places, but not too many to add some color, maybe just some regular dark blue. Be creative here. So it's not that much. It's just like little swishes here and there. Um, and I mean, I kind of like that. I don't, I was thinking about adding yellow to my leaves, but I think I'm going to leave that plain. So what I would like to do is keep outlining everything in black and then we'll add our white. Um, so, you know, keep playing with your flower and your leaf if that's where you are, if where you are, where you are. Uh, keep playing with that. But I'm going to start taking my black and just start outlining everything else. And then I'll kind of show you like where we're going to put little spots that I think are kind of important for these two as well. So I'm going to start doing those broken lines and start kind of outlining all my shapes. And remember, they don't have to touch every time you go back in. For more paint, that is, anytime you go back in, you don't have to complete these lines to where they're touching. They don't have to be all the same width. There we go. Um, and then my leaf leaves. Same thing. I try not to get my hand in the way when I'm doing this for you guys. And then I can't steady my brush very well. Something like so. Uh, and I'm going to outline my flower. So. Grab some of this. And yes, I have pink here, but I'm going to go right over that with black. So you'll see how I have pink outside this black outline. It's just kind of an abstract kind of look, if you will. And just see how much that pops. It's looking really, really good. Uh, don't forget this little stem of the flower. So it doesn't look like you just have this peppercorn blob here. And in that, so what I did on my other example is I just put like little dots kind of in there just kind of make it stand out so it doesn't look like it's just some weird looking stem kind of thing and the remaining part of the black that i did um just in certain areas right so i just did like on the bottom of this glass i might just do like a little swirl kind of like a snake swirl down at the bottom and then i also did one like within the top of the stem so kind of like so like an s if you will um, and it just makes it fun. You don't have to do any of this. Um, and then in the middle of the leaf, right, I wanted to pop out a little bit more. So that dark green, kind of the main stem here, I'm going to take black and do one either right next to it, sometimes right on it. Maybe longer, maybe shorter. And I think that just helps it uh, stand out a little bit more. When we do our white, that's when it's really going to stand out. That mint is really starting to set in in that drink. It's really, really good. I've noticed when, um, so I've been trying to drink like a, you know, like LaCroix and carbonated things to kind of get my like beer fix, if you will. You know, if I'm really craving like a good beer, I'll just have to stick with like an orange water or something. Um, but the LaCroix, gosh, it just, uh, I don't know, something about it really upsets my stomach. But the club soda, lemon lime club soda, signature brand from Safeway 
has been like my go-to that doesn't upset my stomach at all. They have a ginger one too that I was really into in my first trimester, but now it's really sweet, I think. How's it going, you guys? <laughs> I can't wait to see what that Mai Tai looks like or different colors. And remember, um, you know, just like always, um, I know a lot of you have painted with me um, lots of these Sundays. Uh, post your pictures um, in, you know, on the main page or in the event, wherever you want to post them. Send them to me. I get them everywhere. Um, so I love to see them. I like to see all the examples. It's really fun to see what you guys come up with. I'm super excited to try the glitter for the salt on the rim. We'll put some gold on there. Uh, let's see. So those are just fun lines everywhere, right? So more fun lines with white. So make sure you're rinsing off your round brush. Get all that black off. Just because it's super easily can hide within the bristles, you want to get it all off for sure. I'm going to take some white and start outlining just different areas. So same thing we do with the black, right? So now I'm going to take some white maybe on the stem, get some white highlights in there in addition to, you know, all these black and blue ones, something to make it stand out. I'll do white in the leaves as well. So I think I put some little dashes here. And this is where like, you know, you've been doing this with different colors now and they just start to kind of overlap and that's okay. You want them to overlap. You don't want them to completely separate from each other to where you just have like green, white, light green, anything like that. I like the way it looks when it kind of overlaps here. Christine, I will need to repaint before posting. I decided to put my arm through one part <laughs> and drip water on the other. Oh my gosh. That is awesome. Happy accident. All right, I'm going to put some white in this flower. Hi, puppy. And the white just really makes it stand out, too. So it's just enough to where if you're really looking, you can't really see it, but it's just enough to make it pop. I need to know, oh, is the green thing on the rim a lime or <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be a lime, uh, but I mean, maybe it's an umbrella, uh, you know, it's not sticking off the edge. So I guess that makes sense. Wasn't even thinking about that when I painted it, but on mine, look, it's kind of, oh, you can't see it. It probably should look more like that. <laughs> yeah, umbrella would be cool. So if you did this as like different colors for an umbrella, that would be really cool. Put those little, what are they? Like the little Chinese designs and those little umbrellas. They're super cute. That's a good idea, actually. Where else do I want to put my white? Let's go up in the margarita glass and, and in the lime. I'm going to move this a little bit so I can reach. So I'm just going to put some brighter white Kind of in this line. It just looks too perfect for me, so I'm going to try to mess it up a little bit, if you will. And just start putting a little bit more excess color in different places. That's a little bit better. There you go. Amy, my plan is to make a strawberry mango margarita. And that will be a strawberry. Ooh, that would be really fun. Strawberries are cool. Those are easy to make, actually. Uh, let's go. So broken lines within the glass with some white. Just kind of puts that shine on it. Like it's the reflection of the glass. I'm definitely, so I have this pencil line right here. 
I'm going to take my white and go right over that. There we go. And with the ice cubes, oh, pretty much the entire family just got home and my husband just brought me my favorite snacks, mini vanilla wafers. So exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and let's outline this ice, well, this ice cube, all three ice cubes with some of this white too. So again, just broken lines go either within or to the side of each black line. It doesn't have to be the same every single time. It just kind of helps these ice cubes stand out, have a little bit of glow, like they actually have some shine to it. And this, if you have like a smaller detail brush, you might want to try that. Um, I've used, you know, a thicker round brush for quite a while every time I paint and I know that my pressure or what my pressure needs to be to get these thin lines. But if you're not as um, comfortable with it, always use that smaller brush too. There we go. I'm gonna add a little bit of white here. See, there's not one perfect way to do this. So just do whatever you're comfortable with and what, wherever you wanna put a white line, do it. Here we go. Oh, that margarita looks so bright in that picture. I'm gonna put my gold on my plate. I'm gonna move this. I'm gonna put my gold on my plate and my glitter too. Just for some final touches. The gold that I really like, which is actually hard to find in the stores, is this deco art. They have the um, they have this metallics. What is the other one called? Extreme Sheen. That's the other one. I like the matte metallic. Um, I think it shows up a lot better, but it's also a lot harder to find in like Hobby Lobby and all that place or all those places. This one I got online through Deco Art specifically because um, I think they do better selling that Extreme Sheen, which looks really nice, but. I feel like this just shows up a lot easier. And one of my favorite glitters, which this is kind of dried shut, um, is actually from Folk Art. And I think I, I think I keep calling it Folk Life. <laughs> uh, folk Art, you can get this at Walmart. Glitterific, um, super runny, so it works really well um, and very iridescent. I really like if I can open it. Ooh. Yeah, and it comes out really fast, so you have to be careful. And a little goes a long way. So with my gold, I don't wanna to add too much, but I do wanna make it pop. So with the gold, I think I just did like a little line on top of the glass, down here, maybe on the leaf. Get some shine. Uh, I'm going to try some in my flower. Sometimes the gold doesn't work too well with the pink, so you just have to be careful. Or try it in one small like spot before you put it in all these spots and then realize you don't like it. Uh, you can also, I think what I did is I took some gold and I kind of did like a little bit on the outside of each as well. So just this strange looking outline, just some shine. And usually I only do something like this because I have excess gold on my plate and I don't want to waste it. So I just keep trying to find places to put it instead. And it gets crazy. Ooh, and my line even, see, I just keep going. Something like that, so I'm gonna make my stuff stop. I was trying to find glitter stuff that you had us use on the ceramic Christmas tree. Oh yeah, and I haven't been able to find it. Do you mean it was like in the round container? Um, like the luster dust, the metallic luster dust? 
or I forget I had so many so many different kinds of glitters I think I had this glitter and then I had um mm, uh-huh so also folk art actually so I know we use this extreme glitter it comes in different colors so silver iridescent um I didn't have this one, but the luster dust was like the little round tube. So if you guys ever see this in Michaels or in the stores too, this is really fun. They have a ton of colors. Um, luster dust. So you open it and it's actually a little bit hard. And I like to take it and just kind of, you can get it on your finger. And this color is not going to show up actually, but like if I had a blue or something, you just rub it on and it's really shiny. These are really fun. Yeah, the luster dust. Um, anytime I've been in Michaels and stuff, they have like two colors and it's actually not even in the paint section. It's somewhere else. I forget where. I want to say maybe by the stencil area. I'm not sure. What else? Uh, let's do our, let's do our salt. So and I'll show you guys if you want to do like the palm tree and stuff, you can, but I'll show you guys that. Um, so I like to grab my number 12 flat brush. Any brush will really work. You can use a round brush and you're just going to kind of dot. So if you don't have glitter, just use your white, grab into some white. And then you're just going to start daubing kind of in a chunky, like my bristles splay. And then I start daubing some chunks of white on there and it just looks like salt. Uh, but I'm going to grab my glitter and go right over that. So one thing you want to be careful is, ooh, that's going to be so thick and shiny. Um, if you're using your brush to put glitter on, make sure you clean it off right away. Because usually it's pretty like gluish. Um, and it will ruin your brush, especially if you have a nicer brush like Simply Simmons or something you just want to keep and not ruin. Definitely rinse it off right away. And not just with water, you need to use soap or a brush cleaner. Ooh, I'm going to do a close up on that because that looks really nice. In the search bar. Yeah, um, even online, I don't think they have a lot of it, Amy. You might have to go straight to the Deco Art website or Amazon. Um, and they spell. I mean, luster with an R-E instead of E-R. Small detail, but might help you find it a little bit better. Um, but I bought mine off of the Deco Art website, um, and I bought every color. I'm going to put some glitter into the lime, too. Maybe some salt down here. See, then you just get glitter crazy. Yeah, small details matter. Yep. More laundry. Okay, go have fun with that laundry. <laughs> Thanks for watching. All right, so you guys, that is like, that's, that's that, right? So in my example, I had the little fern, the kind of palm tree. So if you want to do that, I'll show you really quickly how to do that. Um, so all I did was take whatever greens and golds and yellows that I had. Um, and you can do this on any part of this, right? So I had this little fern palm tree coming off. So I'm gonna grab, uh, I'll just grab my lime green for now. This is my round brush. And you do, you know, bring a line down just to kind of guide where you want it. And then I always come off, let's see if I can do this sideways. So I start by touching that middle line Let's see if I can make sure you guys can see this. And then I'm just coming off at different lengths and kind of keeping it longer and lighter towards the end. Lighter pressure, that is. And you just kind of want to flick it out. So very little pressure on your brush and flick it out to where it kind of runs out of paint so it gets that wispy look. So that's just lime green, right? So then I'm going to not even rinse off my brush and start putting some dark green in there. No particular place. 
if it's wet and you're adding all these colors, you might just have to grab thicker paint for it to actually come off and show up because it's going to mix with the color underneath it. And then maybe you want to get some of that darker green on there too by mixing, you know, a little bit of black with your green. Even black actually works pr pretty well with this too, which is very little. There's a little bit of black in there. And then I grabbed my gold paint. Oh gosh, it's a lot of gold right there. That is a big chunk of gold. <laughs> but that's kind of how you do your fern. And you can do so one, and you can have one kind of leaning over the glass. You can have them coming up through the bottom corner. You can have them coming down in this corner, anywhere you want to put these. Um, that was just a little detail that I wasn't going to add to this one, but just in case you wanted to do it. That's kind of how that goes. But I think my favorite, I'm going to show you guys this up close. Let's see if that's bright. Let me see. Ah, maybe that's a little bit better. Can you guys see how chunky that is? That's all glitter. White and glitter. But once it dries, it's going to look super cool. Kind of salty. You can almost taste it. I love that part. And now that I look at it, my stem kind of looks a little bit of purple, but that's okay. I think I like this one better than my other one a lot more. How you guys doing? I know it's a, it's not a specific where to put certain paint colors and lines. So kind of, it might've been hard for a few of you, but um, that is it. So remember this video does stay up. Um, in that video section and on the website, um, you can find the link, if you don't remember it, um, canvaslychromatized.com. Uh, but in the About section on Facebook, you'll see the link and it goes straight to the page. Go to Virtual Parties and then you'll see the tutorials and stuff there. Supply list is there. I just updated that yesterday for all the past ones and it takes you to that YouTube link. So you can always come back to it if you don't want to search through it on Facebook. Um, and then again, you can forward and pause and kind of go back and forth, which is really nice. Um, and then next Sunday is the jellyfish. And then we have a Sunday off because I have a virtual conference that I have to attend. Um, and then the Sunday after that, which I believe is the 21st, um, is a, I think I actually have it, is a barn with some sunflowers. So this one is the 21st. Um, and then the jellyfish is next week. This one's really fun. You do not have to use like the purples and greens, but those supply colors are on there. You can change it up. You can do uh, pinks and stuff as well, um, or oranges, or that really cool orange that we made for this painting. Uh, that would look really cool on this one. Terry, I'm not back to work yet. Um, the dental world did go back to work, but I decided not to uh, just because I'm kind of at a higher risk and we are required to use N95s, um, which are hard to get, and some dental offices aren't using them when they should be, and so if they can't provide me with one, I'm not going back, um, just because of the high risk. And the other hard part is uh, they're really hard to breathe in, um, and you already have trouble breathing when you're this pregnant, right? Um, so I feel like I might suffocate myself. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but uh, being that I would only go back to work for a few weeks before I take maternity leave anyway, wasn't worth it to me. So I'll probably go back September, October. So I have a lot of time to paint with you guys. Lots of time. I'm going to pre-record some tutorials just in case, um, if the baby comes early or if I have something scheduled and I can't make it because of the baby, I will still get them posted for you at least. So they're not going to be live per se, um, if that happens, but you'll still get the recording. And then hopefully, oh gosh, hopefully we'll be back in um, in-person parties probably come late July, August, depending on the phases. I know um, Oak Harbor up north, they're in phase two, but I still can't have a party up there just because you guys have to sit closer than six feet away. So yeah, super excited. Um, so remember, I will be posting events throughout, I think I have one more weekend throughout June uh, to post an event. And then I'm going to kind of see how it goes from there. I still want to do these every Sunday. 
Um, but it just depends, depends on me and baby. So um, I will try to keep doing them as long as I can. Um, and still maybe when baby comes, I'm going to do them on Sunday. Maybe, maybe if he's taking a nap or if I give them to my husband or something, just so I can get some time to, yeah, yeah, you. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, if you guys have any questions, let me know, um, let me know what you guys want to paint. Um, you know, this one and the last one weren't my favorite. The next one's going to be super fun. So if you guys think of something you want me to paint or teach you, um, just let me know, message me anytime and I will try to make a free tutorial for that. So, um, message me, write it in a comment, something, post your pictures for today. Um, and I will see you guys next Sunday. If you guys are in the virtual club, I think I see you on the fourth. I think we have one coming up this next week. So our first, one of our first June ones, it's either the mermaid or one of those two back there. So, um, and always remember you can buy these shirts. Um, if you want a text message or Facebook message before I go live, you can sign up for that too on the homepage. And there is a virtual tip jar if you had fun. So thank you guys so much. And I will see you hopefully sooner than later. Finish that drink, finish that margarita and that Mai Tai.